All right, we are live, guys. Who said what up, Sean? We are live right now. Episode number two from here to their show. We are live at the Moto Sandbox. I got Sean Rife, my co-host. I'm Meatloaf. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, it's been a couple of weeks. All right, we are live, guys. Who said what up, Sean? It's been a couple of weeks since we've been here, Bob. And uh, got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. What's going on, Pepin? I got you. All right, we had a little bit of an issue. Where you at, Sean? Right here. Right there? Yeah. All right, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. I had something playing in the background we were picking up that we didn't need. Boy Dog in the house. Big White. Thanks for tuning in. Big All right, here we go. Oh, that's, that's. Episode number two from here to there show with Meatloaf and Sean Rife. And as I was saying uh, just a minute ago, it's been a couple of weeks since we did this. And uh, we've had a lot happen. Oh yeah. A lot of stuff's been going on. Uh, Sean, you've been traveling a little bit. Now you're back home. Got from some stuff taken there, care of. From you've been, here. yeah, you kind of been bouncing around. And uh, I've been doing the same thing. I've been super busy, but uh, lots going on in the sport of motocross. We got football. Uh, -huh. uh, we got Travis Pastrana and Kevin Wyndham going to be at the motocross of nations. Yeah. Wyndham's looking like Forrest right. Gump. I mean, I, I can't believe that right now, but I tell you what, man, it, it's, it's a good thing. I like it. How do you feel about it? I feel like if they would have known this in last year, you know what I mean? If they Get up there this, that microphone, Sean, right? Yeah, Let's hear you. I ain't trying to kiss it. You, know you got to put her right there with you. Anyway, if we want to hear you. If they'd have known this last year at this time, and they had a whole year, right? I think it would be a little different story. I just don't think they got enough time to. You don't think they got enough time to get to, ready? Not to win it, but I don't think. I think they'll be up in there. It is a team race. You know what I mean? But hey, hey, uh, one dude's we're gonna, out though. One dude's out. Who's that? Uh forty-nine, Favier. Oh, Febra. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's I s you know what? I did see that. He's a strong contender. Honestly. I tell you, you know, today, dude, we're going to hit some different subjects, too. Yeah. It ain't going to be all mo I want everybody watching right now to know that. We're going to be all over the map today, and I hope that's all right with everybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. We don't want to lose our tune, you know, our, our listeners that tune in here. Mm -hmm. But uh, so over the last couple of weeks, I had some exciting stuff happen. Last weekend, actually, I got to go up and announce at Gatorback, so I did some announcing. And uh, for me, I, I enjoy announcing a lot. That's part of why I wanted to do a radio show, too. How is that knowing, like, going to that race? Obviously, you're from Florida, so you know a lot of them. But not knowing a lot of them at the same time, trying to call it out. Call oh, out, man. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm this guy's you. leading. This guy's second. Oh, we got yeah. a downrider. Who's that? Trying to yeah. figure out everything. It's uh, It was actually really interesting, you know. Um, for me, that was a larger event and I have done some other stuff, uh, in the past that, you know, was like freestyle motocross. So it was a little bit of a different genre, you right. know, the people were a little bit different, but, um, I tell you what, man, there's nothing like announcing a race like that where you got the top amateurs that are around in the area and some of them are coming from far away. Right. Yeah. You know, oh, they travel a while to get there. Some of them, yeah. man, I tell you what, we had some good times on the road. How about that trip All up there? Of them. We went up there that one year. Where'd we go? Cleveland or something for some arena cross. What about that ice where, the, where we were coming home? That dude hit the ice. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. what, that was crazy, wasn't it? You don't even remember I mean, that. You were so young, you don't even remember. I don't. I don't remember a lot of it. Oh man, see, for me, I, I know where we went. Well, I was probably sleeping when dude hit the ice. What do you mean? That's why I don't remember that part. Oh, because you that were out. on the way home. You yeah. know what I mean? I was snoozing. <laughs> you were like, hell with this. I'm going to sleep. You know what? I think you might have been sleeping. I guarantee it. But what about like all the trips that we've gone to, dude? Just think about all the places that you've been, Sean. And this is something we were – everybody at home, we kind of talk on the phone. We, we go over some things, right? And I like to keep track of what we talk about. This is something we've actually talked about recently is like our travels and checking stuff out, you know, seeing stuff all around the country. 
Yeah. You know, some people have been all around the world. I ain't made it that far, but I've made it all around the country. That's a big feat. That's a big, I mean, there's only, only a couple. i the country one time. There's a couple states left I got to get. Yeah. I really want to get to Montana. There's a couple that I'm just like not even interested in at How the do same you, time. You know, you're getting older now. You're like me. I'm starting to get older too. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> we're becoming old people, I tell you what. But how do you feel about traveling these days? You like traveling anymore or are you over it? Oh, I talk to it just depends because all my traveling, there was never really any like off time? pressure, oh. like uh, not really pressure, but just regret or like stress because it was all as a kid. But even now it's like I, by traveling, I learned how to travel. So when we do travel, it's just like another way of life. You know I mean? love it, dude. You know, you get to check out new stuff. You know, my favorite thing to do, that's why they like to call me meatloaf. I like to eat. <laughs> I like to I eat, man. It. What's your you favorite know, I, thing? You want me to be honest? With, I'm. Oh, this is gonna kill my motocross school, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I like IHOP. Uh, huh? I don't, I don't Not for that. you. I've probably only been three times. Hey, man, you ain't never had the pancakes there. Uh, Think about the pancakes. You ever had pancakes at IHOP? You ever had blueberry I ones? I didn't even get. What em. about the strawberry ones? Nah, I should. I should. I shouldn't talk about this. I got a motocross school. These kids are watching. They're going, man. This guy's not eating. No. Well, look at me. Come on now. Man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, traveling is fun. Um, you get to see a lot of things too, you know? Uh, that's what I, when I talk to people, I'm like, man, I love to travel. I like to go take this podcast show and just go somewhere and try it. <laughs> I think that we're getting so good yeah. at, at setting this up and you guys listening and watching back home. You, you ought to have seen us scrambling. We had some help <laughs> of some outside people and without them, I don't know we would have got that done. Oh, I guarantee you, it wasn't. It was impossible. <laughs> it was rough, man. We, hey, we were running tight on time. I'm still learning this new audio deal that we got set up here, and uh, hopefully we're sounding good. Maybe somebody could leave a comment and kind of give me an idea of how we sound. We tried to set up a little bit different today, and um, I said I could hear an echo. Yeah, I think we're good though. I think we got rid of the echo. Oh, we definitely. They can hear you too. We got you. <laughs> but this is from here to there this is what we do we like to sit down and talk about things we're hanging out and uh you know we're live at the moto sandbox uh courtesy of jason baker at dream tracks once again gotta gotta make sure we get our guy out there dream tracks jason sure. baker he's yeah. the guy he is the guy uh-huh the man hey and you're you're going right up in there behind him bub it, you think your skills just, are coming it's along not just the track you know what i mean that that's the like they could do that blindfolded. It's just a lot of all the other stuff, you know. That goes along else, with it. It's like a, it's a big story, you know what I mean? It, it, well, that's why we're here. Yeah. We're starting here. We're going. To I want to know. Uh, so some other stuff, Sean, going on. You been watching any football lately? Man. You caught a little bit of it. Did you? Let with me ask B-dubs. you this. I got to ask you this. Did you hear about last night? I heard about last night. What What'd you hear? Talk to me. Yeah, I watched half of it. I got it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, what's your thoughts? I feel like it was – now, Big White will probably give us a, a, an opinion on that. He's not here to... – hey, our producer's not here tonight. He is missing in action, folks. Yeah. What's yeah. your thoughts he's on, on that? He's on here, though. He's, he, on, he's here. on here, but he's missing in action. We had to set all this stuff up on our own tonight, and I think we did a dang good job at it. We made some improvements, too. You guys watching at home – Make sure you let us know what you think about it, and uh, yeah, be sure to spread that link around and get some people in here to check it out. So, Sean, what do we got? What's what's uh, what do you got on your mind? What do you want to get out there? What do you well, you got to have something interesting for me? Man, nothing tonight. There's there's I so much talk to interesting you about stuff. If I just bust it down just today in general, you just can, you today know I mean? in general. I want to hear some stories though. You got any good stories? Let me hear something good, Sean Rye. Because you know this is this is where we get real good, and we got <laughs> we got plenty of spectators that want to hear everything we got to say. So, well, you can't be scared, bub. You got to run it. How about when you well, went we to Canada? Talk about dirt bike story. We, we're gonna talk about anything. Talk what about? do you want? Just, we gotta have a good. How about? Hey, man. tell me about the purple silk outfit at what six in the morning? Nah, it wasn't six. It wasn't six. But I'm gonna tell you, like, 
That's how good of a dude Kevin Windham is. I go down to his house. Never met the guy before. Um, new Ziggy through Factory Connection. You know, he got me to uh, to I Windham's house. There. We're riding, doing doing Supercross for you know before the season and stuff. And I get there on a Friday. Um, Saturday, he's like, "You guys watch football?" Calls me. I'm like. Yeah, I was like, I thought he was going to invite me into his house you oh, know, to, to watch football. He's yeah. like, well, we got we got season tickets to the Saints game. If you guys want to come, me and Adam. And I'm like, oh, heck, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, we you were all about it. all the way there, two, like two-hour drive. We see him in traffic. He hands us our tickets. Didn't see him all day. We sat at like the corner of the end zone about seven, seven – uh, Seven aisles up, and I'm like, this is awesome. Ended up knowing the people beside us, and um, yeah, it was, it was cool. I'm like, this dude is awesome. You were loving that. Tell me about that property out there. I ain't never been there. I've seen some photos of it. It looks good. I got a bunch of stories from there. You do? Uh-huh. What about the one we, we had 30 laps on ice or something you told me about? Ah, oh, dude. What is that all about? Well... It got below freezing one night. Oh, boy. Next morning. You know, K-Dub, you know, he he's, he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to ride. Whatever. I'm like, man, what, you, you want to ride? We're going to ride. What are we going to do? Yeah. We get over there. There's The track's pretty good. It's a little slick, but it's pretty good. But the, there's there's puddles, and they're iced over. Yeah. I couldn't do, like, seven laps at a time. My hands were just gone. Crazy. And he does just one moto. He does a little warm-up. Yeah. Does five, ten minutes. Comes in, goes right back out, does a 30-lap moto. Oh, boy. Like, dude, ices every lap. I mean. Kills it the oh, whole time. I'm like, wow. Wow. He is, he's on a tear for sure. You know what, though? People like that, man, are just good at a lot of things. Yeah. You know, some people are just good at stuff. Good at life. Some people are good on phones. Some people are good at video games. Yeah. Some people are just good at life in general. <laughs> What do you think, Sean? I think so. It's you like know, a, it, that's the best game to play, being good at life. And you know, uh, like for instance, you got that fight coming up, that McGregor. Oh, that Tell dude's me, he nuts. hey, that dude's nuts. But oh, he's, he's nuts. Hey, he's got it figured out though. He's nuts. Does he but not? I'm does he not have you. it figured out? He's taking shots at the press. Dude, and, oh, he's crazy. And the thing is, is like, I, I feel like whatever he says is super aggressive, right? I, but. Normally, though, he'll back that shit up, and it's crazy. He will. You know? But, shit, everybody's got their day, you know what I mean? A couple hey, times. A couple times. For sure. A couple times. Old Nate Diaz, or Nick Diaz, whatever his name is. Hey, Diaz Nate, boy. Yeah. Nate, right? Yeah. That's the one that got him. Boy, he didn't know what to do. Just wore him out. He's like an anaconda on the ground, had a panther <laughs> on top of him. <laughs> that panther was getting him, boy. Oh, he was like, boy. oh, I can't, I can't do nothing with him. What do you think about that? panther just tear that anaconda up we got some spectators in the house today too guys so if you see us looking around the studio that's because we got some spectators hanging out they're listening in live right here they didn't even want to go home they're like man <laughs> they're like this shit's so interesting i'm not going nowhere tonight i'm gonna stay right here with meatloaf and rife so hey how did i get my nickname can you tell that story because i know there's people out there going why is this guy what's why is his name meatloaf what happened where, where's the Scrooge at? Uh, I'm, he might be tuned in, but I doubt it. <laughs> He's probably looking at cars on his own. Uh, was he a car guy? Uh-huh. Nah. Yeah, he got all kinds of cars. The Scrooge? Uh-huh. No. Yeah, he does. No. The Scrooge has got... What kind of cars he's got now? Shoot, he's got a, like a 55 Chevy, 57 no. Chevy. He got a 55 Chevy he up there? Got a it's been a while. 70 Chevelle, a it's, 90. It's, it's been a little while, Sean. I'm like, wow. Half of them ain't even done yet. <laughs> hey, I got something on here. Uh, we got somebody watching. They want to hear about the Canadian Nationals, man. They want to hear some stuff about that. They want to know about Sean Rife going to Canada. That was a journey. Was it? Yeah, we went. Did you figure some Ohio. stuff out? What, what happened there? We went from Ohio. Okay. 52 hours. 52 hours? 52 hours with oh, the camping. Oh, man. Huh? Like three days. It was a journey. To get to where you had to go in Canada? Almost to Vancouver. What if I was coming from Florida? Ooh. 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 
I'd say well, that's got to be like 70 at oh, least. Oh, man. I don't even want to think about that. I'm getting where I don't even like to drive no more. Like, I wanted to go up there for that Destinations. I want to see K-Dub kill it. And I just, I don't know, man. I might go. I'm not sure. Tell yeah. us a little something. Wait, when you were in Canada, how many teams did you ride for? Just the one? Yeah. That's not just bad. Just one. How many years were you up there? Just one. Just the one? <laughs> and I went and back. Then, I went back for th- uh, three races. Oh, you did? That was probably like three years later, though. Oh, so that, it was totally different deal. Uh-huh. Yeah. What, uh, what do you, uh, tell me about this fight, because I know I just brought it up. Oh. <laughs> I want to hear your, yeah, because I got to bring this up, because there's a lot of people hot on that subject Well, I really right haven't now. seen either one, you know what I mean? Okay, so I, well, I, I just, you know I the whole, the conference. oh, you did see it. Yeah, I saw that. What's so. your, okay, here, let's go off of the conference. So, what is Sean Rice's opinion of that conference? When it comes down to Conor McGregor, you got to tell me what you think about this guy. He's Irish, he's mean. And then we got uh, I mean, I think Ner- Nermata, Nermata sure. Getov, or however you say it. What's his name? The other dude. That guy, I don't know, man. This could be a good fight. Let's but talk about something different. in the press different. conference, dude was calling him out like he already knows him. You know, know what I mean? He's like. Well, he does kind of. You know, but you can't judge that off of what he's become. Yeah. You ain't got a record like that. From doing from, nothing. From buying T-shirts, I promise. Well, that's like uh, a Carmichael or something. Yeah, it's but like, it's a different sport. Well, and he's young, like that's all. He's like, oh, those dudes will buy my T-shirts. Yeah, but now he's, what is he like, twenty-six and zero or something crazy? Who? Which one? The what? guy he's fighting. Oh, the uh, Nermana Getov or whatever. Whatever. He yeah, is. he's uh, he he's like undefeated, I believe. I'm pretty sure, dude. But the thing is, is like when it comes to these big fights, you ever notice all the hype that gets around it? How come we don't get hype like that for dirt bike racing? Everybody watching. We How come we don't spread, get hype like that? It's just spread it like. It's just, What's the deal? It's just wide across the country. It's well, yeah, but that's like across the, the world, day. though. How do we get? Hey, how can we get uh, a hype like that around motocross, right? Around the world, because that fight stuff like that is all over, and we got Feld behind everything that's going on, right? So Feld, they're they're the Supercross people, right? How come we can't make it a little bit bigger? They don't have a problem with NASCAR. It's pretty much everywhere. Well, I don't, I don't understand it, dude. I mean, really it's a compete with that, I guess, because it's just I don't know, been man. around so long. Yeah, is that what it is? And it's a tradition from from a lot of things. I mean, not that motocross Even like isn't, Daytona. but I think a car was introduced before a dirt bike. Yeah. So then it started way earlier, when people were hovering around, around the track. Yeah. Then they'll be like, damn, dirt bikes were huge. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, you, you know the flat track stuff? People get into that, too. Yeah. You watch that at all? Nah. You don't watch that? Are you a MotoGP guy? I went guy? to a flat track track on a 60. You did? With regular tires. And tore it up. In the middle of the I can winter. see Sean Rife right now just coming around a corner and just lighting up the rear. Oh, I got folded a couple times. No. Uh-huh. No. Yeah, because you're like, yeah, and just and you're pinned. catch. Yeah, and you get thrown. Uh, See, I was talking about doing it, man, and, um, you know, because I, I like to look for different stuff to do. And I thought, well, what if I tried a little bit of that? I got that brand new 18 sitting down there. I figure I'll throw some different rims on it. I think you got to lower the front end, whatever, right? Go out there and give it a shot. I'll take Sean Rife. Some traction. I'll I take Sean Rife. That. If I can't do it, I'll let him do it. Flat I'll track. back you. I'll back you for it. That works. Um, so, how about like, let's go with something totally off the wall right now. Let's go with uh, battery cars. Solar, what is it? Solar power cars? Is that what they call it? Uh, the smart car? Like a Tesla. Uh, you see your boy Elon Musk? I think. Did you watch I just that show? I want to. Uh, Did you ever watch that? No. I told you to check it out. I know. How am I going to talk to you about stuff you don't check it out, right? I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. Can't talk about that. Then. You can tell about me that. about it. I can tell you about it. <laughs> I can tell you it was a pretty interesting show. You know how, like, okay, this guy, he got into this conversation, Sean, yep. about how AI is, like, going so far or whatever, okay? And uh, he's talking about that, like, AI is already so far advanced past the human Right. weird stuff dude and then as you watch this guy talk like i was totally zoned out and i was into it because it was i almost felt like <laughs> like 
Like he was testing it or something, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he just I, wasn't even. Well, it was. He's a clone. You see that dude? Yeah, he's like dude. saying he was a clone. Well, no, he that's what I'm other saying. People were clones. Yeah. I'm like, Come on. And he was saying that uh, something about like, like I said, the the AI was already so much far. It was like scary to him. Right. So apparently he knows something we don't. Right. I don't know. They said Gucci Man was cloned. No, he did. Yeah, after he got out of jail, he looked completely different. Really? Yeah. He might have been. Hey, anything's possible. Uh, dude. I've seen it on the internet. It's probably not real. Eh, probably not. It could be. Anything's possible, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So what do we you got? You believe in something. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah. Rife. What's up? <laughs> you've been working hard? You've been getting some uh, I mean You've been getting some stuff together for you got anything for us? Half ass. What when are you gonna give us something new? Everybody at home, check out Riffy Records on Instagram. Uh, Riffy right here. Tell us what do you got coming for us here? What's new? What what are you getting excited about in the music world? Because I know it's inside you. Uh, it's just a matter way. of you getting time to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm tr- I want to I want to make sure I pick some topics, Sean, that interest you too, bub. Because I'm a motocross guy. I talk about that forever. You know what I mean? But I don't want to bore the people That's, at home too, because they want to hear other stuff. Yeah. But we got to venture I mean, a little you, bit. You, Isn't that what you, this is about? We're on an adventure. I feel like this is what I feel like. What do you feel like? What I do you grew, feel like, Sean? I grew right? up in in dirt bikes, and it's. That's like what surrounded me. It is, isn't it? It still does. You know, forever. But it still music, does right I'm, now. I'm really into music. I listen to music daily. You know what I mean? Like yeah. find new songs, new people. But I feel like I uh, I test it so much, like look into it, that I don't listen to a lot of people because it's like I'm looking for a certain thing. You know what I mean? What for music? For music. If you could say a song that you like right now from anyone, what would it be? Man. Pick one. Give one me some, song. One, just one from any time. That well, yeah, that you like. Give us an idea. I What's like in Sean David Rice? Allen Co. The Ride. Oh my lord! <laughs> that, I wasn't expecting that. That's, that that's definitely. What? But that's all right though. But I like that song for sure. That song in particular. Uh huh. All right. But, yeah. But what about uh, what? What's your, your out of your songs? What's your favorite? I ain't never talked to you about this. I, I'm, I like this. Tell me, I'm not, Sean. Come I'm on. not even sure that I have. I want to know because this is stuff I don't even know. This is what I, I would like to talk I, about. I critique it so much, like there, it's. I can't even like it. Yours? For the most part, like, dude, I'll make something. I'll should I play listen, one right now? Listen, listen. <laughs> That's up to you. You th- should I play one? We could, play. we could. We could. We could let everybody hear at home. We need to get a full verse, and I need to, or you know, like a full song, uh-huh. and I want to put them on here. Hey, Poi Dog wants to do a track with you. Does he? That's what it says. What's he do? You better listen to your pit board girl yeah, over there. She's crazy. She's got all the signals out. She likes that pit board. She doesn't <laughs> have to say nothing. She just holds it up and tells us what to do. <laughs> we got a new producer in the house. What do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, Poi Dog, though, he says, Rife, I want to do a track with you for real. Let's do it. Poi Dog, you really think you can hang with Riffy? I usually do it every day, at least. At, I wonder if Poi Dog, I wonder if he shared it. this right now, because I share all his stuff. You think? What did he say? The acoustic fun? He says that he rapped and he produced. Oh, Poi oh, Dog, why perfect. don't you tell me this stuff, dude? That's awesome. This is why I like to have people that are talking to us in the chat. It keeps things going. Like I don't even I didn't even know this guy did anything with that. I've known this dude and I don't even know anything about that. That's crazy. See I just found something out about him. I found out you like a song that I never thought that you would have ever told me you liked. <laughs> I never I didn't think I was gonna get that out of you, Sean. But I'll take it though. You know why? Because it's interesting. Yeah. It's There's interesting. There's a lot more in that genre that are good too. There is in there. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. I'm excited. For the rest of You're the year. You're always excited. I'm excited, though. I got a lot of stuff coming up. <laughs> what? What's the first thing? Well, I'm announcing this weekend. Oh, that's I, good. Listen, anytime I'm going announcing, or if I'm on this microphone right here, if I'm on the microphone, I have fun, dude, and I love it. 
That's you, pretty you, exciting, and it's in a couple days, so that's probably the first thing coming that's up. That's the first thing. <laughs> yeah, that's like I'm going to tackle quick. that one first. I'm going to tackle that one first. And then uh, we got the mini O's coming up, you know what I mean? We got the mini O's coming. I'd like to announce that one. That'd be good. Might have yeah. to have Sean Reif. You know what who, we should do? Who does that one? Uh, Norm, West Kane. Like, yeah, West Kane. West Kane. I think he just does like the podium, so. Yeah. And then Jeff Hines normally does the. Oh, uh, yeah. You know who? You oh, know Jeff my Hines. God. You know Jeff Hines. Yeah. He's good, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like Jeff Hines. Yeah, he's funny. Hey. He remembers me. What if you put me side by side with Hines in the booth? Announcing many of us. Oh boy. You think who else announced? They got a co announcer. I know. That's what I'm talking. I think I would like to be the guy. Yeah. We'll have Heinz. Hey, we'll have Heinz be you guys watching? Give me your opinion on that. Poi Dog, you, you I want to hear your opinion. I like Poi Dog. You know why? Because he don't lie to me. He doesn't lie. He just tells me the truth. No. He just says, Oh, it's this Man, way. every time I meet him, he's like the same he's same cool, dude. casual, collective. Cool dude, hey, how you doing? See ya. Guys, tonight we are at the Moto Sandbox. We have a couple of things coming up here for you. Um, one of them is going to be live on a phone call coming in from the number 70 of Devin Simonson. Amateur sensation in the motocross world. And that's going to be our caller coming in. Also... We're going to have our 10-minute block. If you guys have a local business, uh, a company that you want to get out there, this is our local block. We're going to do that at 8.30 Eastern time. Is that fair, Sean? 8.30 Eastern, we are going to give you guys 10 minutes. You can call in. Okay. You can talk about your company and what you have to offer. We can't give you the whole 10 minutes, obviously. <laughs> But we can give you a good 30 seconds or a minute, right? I'll, hey, when we talked about doing this show, it was about the community. Yeah. We want to give them something that they can listen to and enjoy. Yeah. You know, and uh, we said that we wanted to help them. So, you know, if you got something out there you want to get out, we're going to give you a chance here at 830 Eastern time. I think that's Sounds a, fair to me. I think that's fair. That we'll is, give them 10 uh, minutes. That's uh, It's 748 right now, Sean Rife. I like it, you know. Got 40 minutes. Something that uh, that was that it was on my mind was like this show right here, all this audio stuff. You know how like into this that I've gotten lately. <laughs> Have I told you? Uh huh. This stuff is fun for me. I oh, like I it. Know. It's, I like it's this. Interesting. It's uh, you know, we went from our first show. We c I don't even think you could really hear me because I watched it. I can hear you pretty good when I watch it. I thought not bad. That's just me. Now we got us. We're we're wide open, bub. You, me, everybody around. <laughs> we even got a backdrop for you guys today. We're trying to step up the program around here, and uh, like I said, we're at the Moto Sandbox. We got Jason Baker. He brought us out here. He says, "Hey guys, do what you got to do." Tracks are looking good out there. You guys been working hard. Yeah, they're fine. What are we doing with the motocross track? Are we doing a new one? Is there a new layout coming? Uh, oh, you don't even know, do you? <laughs> Mack them. There's pl there's <laughs> give me one of them. Give me them. I, give me there, one of them one time. There's plenty of new ones out there already. Like that I haven't even seen yet. I haven't. I haven't been here for a couple just weeks. Just the way it is. You, you know, our show. Our show was put on hold. But we're back. We're back. We're back. But this weather's been holding out for it's, us a lot better the last couple of weeks. So. So that's helped you out. I mean, that's helped you out. Just everything looks. Looks Normal. better. And not like, wow, it's been raining around this month. Eh? You know, it makes you wonder, too, like, what other people do to keep their stuff up, you know. Some people can't even put the time in, bub. They got so much other stuff going on, you know, that they can't even make it to the track. And then the track just stays how it is. Yeah. Well, you know, they, I they, remember those days. Well, they hey, got it is other what stuff is. going on. Yeah, yeah. man. Got to do it. But, uh, so we got... Let's talk a little bit about uh, that motocross of nations because that's going to be a good one. They're talking about Pastrana doing a backflip, dude. Somebody's posted that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that, but uh, I think I mean I would. I get a kick out of the it. dude, though. You know what I mean? I think it would be awesome if he came over the finish line and just busted a backflip. I think he has to be leading. 
for to it, do to, it to really. So what if he? What if, if he, he got? It's got to be like first lap or something. If bust he the somehow whole shot. hole shots, yeah. Gets and then down he goes to a point where he could do it. That's the only. I mean, it would still be gnarly. Just, yeah. But mid pack, you're not gonna be throwing backflips. I, I mean, I think if you're doing that, then then there's something wrong with you. He wouldn't do that. I wouldn't believe. I don't think he the would excitement either. of getting the whole shot. He might just do it just to do it though. Like if he said in practice or something. Well, he could, or if he just had like a race and he was done, right? He could say, oh, I'm going to go over here and bust me a backflip real quick for the fans. Because you know Travis, he's just out there, dude. He loves doing stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. So You watched the thing where he jumped. Did you watch that? The Evil Knievel? The, yeah, where he did that. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Oh, I bet it was a good I want to go to Vegas, sure. Sean, right? That's, I haven't been to Vegas. What about the uh, – you going to go out there for – you going to Anaheim 1? What are you doing? I'd rather go to Anaheim 1 than, than – Than the Cup? Yeah. Yeah, I just so because too. every I think it's just so hot. Like there's so many people. Uh, there. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it's such a big. I think Anaheim one. one is way more important than Mize, and, right. and you see what, what everybody's these people got. been doing. Yeah, if it, if what's about to happen right now, putting in the work. You still think that at the Monster Cup, but it's not on the same. Yeah, I mean you're still like, damn, you know, this is new. We got Plessinger coming in, Savachi. We, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. Don't get me wrong, but I think it'll be good. Um, to see what happens to new year, people moving up. It'll be good. I'm excited about that. How do you feel? I feel pretty good about it. I think so, it's going to be good. Yeah, oh yeah. I think them young guys are going to make an impact. It's going to be good. Um, so something else, uh, that happened and this is somebody that I always, when I was growing up, I used to watch and, uh, it's kind of sad to have to deliver it, but old Tyler Evans. Oh, yeah. That's. I got a story with him. Really? Uh-huh. Can we hear it? Yeah. Is that one that Sean Rife? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Let, all right. Here we go. Let's get this story. I want to hear this. Because so, these are the things, Sean, that I like hearing. When you get going, yeah. you give me some good <laughs> stories sometimes, boy. I tell you what. Jeez. Well, here's a good one. All right. I want to hear it. Let's go. I want to hear it. I'm excited about After Loretta's in 09. All right. I go to Canada to Walton in the 450 class. Okay. Um, I was 15, I think. Tyler Evans was riding for the same team I rode for the next year, but he was on the 450 the year before. So first moto, I'm battling for like fourth, fifth, sixth. He's in the middle of us. You know, we're okay. me, him, and some other dude. Everybody's just throwing down. Well, I'm behind both of them. Okay. They're battling. I somehow pass them both. Oh, boy. I'm in front of Evans like three laps. This dude comes in hot, you know, runs me off the track. My dad's all. Evans did? Uh-huh. Did he clean you or just run you off no, track? He just, just run you off track. He passed me pretty strong, drove me way. You know he what did. I mean? Like, but. It wasn't nothing too crazy. I was just young and shit. He was, he's six foot four or something, five he's a big something. Dude. You know what I mean? He was thick too, man. When he I worked out the, a lot. When I get off the track, my dad's like, what the hell? What are you doing? Let dude pass. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, just can, I can see the Scrooge he, right now saying that. He's like, you just passed, dude. Why Why is he passing yeah. you back? You know, right, right. Like, you, lost, you must have fell off or something because whatever. So. I'm like, man, I don't know y'all. <laughs> Shoot, that dude, I don't want nothing, I don't you want don't want nothing to do with that. You want to do with that, yeah. So we go up to sign up. Mm -hmm. And he's up there in front of us getting the check Get because you go up to this trailer and get your check. They okay. don't mail it to you. Yeah. And he's up there, and I'm like, hey. I'm like, here's a dude right here. He's like, he's like. That's what, that's what the Scrooge dude, said? Dude. Like, we yeah. need to get the Scrooge to call in now I that know. we got our audio right. We need to get the Scrooge to call in. What are we gonna What are we gonna talk to Devin about? <laughs> what do you want to ask? What's, we gotta ask him. Is he racing him. many of? Is he racing the Monster I, Cup? I think so. That's probably what you talk to him about. Should we get him on the phone now? You want to get him on there? I don't matter. Devin Simonson, where are you at? I'm gonna get him on there. Sean Rife. So this story with Tyler Evans. What year was that? I was in '09. Oh, I was already done racing. Oh, 2009. I came back though. I come back and got her done. Went to Loretta's. 
2016, <laughs> right? Two thousand or seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Last year. Yeah. Not this past year. Yep. Got it's it done. T- How weird is it gonna be to say twenty twenty? I don't even know. It's kinda odd. I don't even know, dude. Honestly, like, it's flying by. There's so much weird stuff too changing. Like I said, with the cars and all that and like Tesla and Dude, just think about it. like look at the look at the um Alta like bikes. Here's, here's one thing I don't get. What? Just because you made an electric car, yeah. Why would why would they let him sell, or um, why would they let him shoot the rocket in the space just without testing it or any of that? Why would they let him dig a hole in the ground? <laughs> All he had to do was get a permit. He said. <laughs> he says, "Oh, we just told him that I was going to dig a hole in the ground with the rocket." No, just because. Like, I guess that guy, from how I, I mean, I watched the show like four times because I was, seriously, you want me to be honest with you, you freaked me out. I, I, I probably wouldn't have watched it the second time then. Well, no, because it, <laughs> no, it like makes you want to see it again because you're like, man, is that for real? Is that guy really like that? Like, he almost gives you a, a feeling that he's got something already in him programmed and he's already, because like. He'll talk, right? And then he'll stop and he like will look right there and he won't move. And he's in the middle of like giving you an answer. But he'll pause, he'll like think it, and then boom, he says it. Like it's weird. Oh shit. It's it's I bet Brittany's seen it. I doubt it. No? She don't watch that stuff? Nah. The Tesla thing with Elon Musk? No? She didn't see it. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to get you to watch this stuff one day. I wish we would have had the TV. You know, we got a couple things we're still going to add. We're going to get more soundproofing going on. Right? Yep. We're going to get us a TV now right I'm here. I'm going to sing into it. Are you? <laughs> right, is, is this going right to help now. get some new beats out of Sean Reif? Uh, would, Are we going to get something? That would help. I mean, we're going to finish her up. We're going to run her down. That's cool, though. You I don't even know you can buy that. Yeah. I don't pay that much attention to it. Oh, it works good, bub. I think. I thought we'd give it a shot at least. Nobody said nothing about the audio being bad today so far. And we're at 7.57 p.m., bub. But I'm going to tell you right now one thing. What? If we were spun around. What way? Where are we going? Talking into that. It would. I think it would be even So better. what, you want me like this? No, 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 no. Like that? Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Are we... What are we on? We're rolling with it. She said, are you guys on pause? No, we're not on pause. This is from here to there. Episode number two. We are live right now. We're on YouTube live. Uh, we switched it up too. We got off the, the Facebook deal. Um, YouTube, they just kind of give us like a little bit better of a platform to work with. So we made a switch. Um, I know some of the people they were watching on Facebook, but. Uh, we got the link out there for them, so hopefully they'll come on over and check it out. Um, what were we? You were going to tell me a story, weren't you? What were we? No, Devin was calling. That's what it was. We're going to get Devin Simonson on in here. I want to talk to him about Monster Energy Cup, see what he's got planned out. Wait, nothing to call right now. Let me make sure I got it open. Got to get him to co- Oh, it's my fault. He probably already called. <laughs> oh boy I didn't have it right Poi Dog thank you for sharing get some people in here we want to have some people in give us opinions on things we're going to bring Devin Simonson in here I want to hear uh, his thoughts on uh, what he has coming up with the Monster Energy Cup the poodle that's a big race for th- for anyone going there did you? You never. No, it was different. It was U.S. Open for yeah, you. US Open. Yeah, now it's Monster Energy Cup. Yeah. Hey, uh, Hope I can get him tuned in here. Two, I've hey, been I, testing all this stuff too, trying to make sure it's right. Poi Dog got on me after that first show. He said, maybe. Boy, I'm going to have to get with you. I said, Boy, I'm going to have to step it up myself, I guess. <laughs> he lives like three hours from me. I can't be going down there now. Maybe, maybe one time I might. I might go. I'll bring you with me, Sean Rye. That's a little journey, huh? It is, isn't it? Uh, I think they're racing this weekend at FTF or 
Florida Tracks and Trails. FTT, Florida Tracks and Trails. I think there was a race there this weekend. We got the Gold Cups. Got all kinds of stuff going on. I went all the way down there one day, bro, and that Where? big track wasn't even open. Where? Florida Tracks and Trails. I've never been down there. Last year. I ain't never been down there. Two years ago, maybe. I ain't never been down there, dude. It was a wicked place, but the big track wasn't even open. Hey, we riding on this on the amateur track. I'll tell you right now, we can get on. Uh, we got another show. We can we can get on. Hey, you know what? We got another one coming too. Yeah. Hey, that's gonna be a good one. So guys, this one here, this is like sports and stuff, and we kind of tell. <laughs> <laughs> this is from here to there. This is our journey. Uh, but we're gonna have us another one. We're gonna really do some entertaining. We're gonna bring some jokes out of the box. You know what I mean? We're going to talk about some firecrackers. Huh? You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about some good stuff. Oh, we got some. We had a bomb here, son. Oh, a bomb? A bomb. <laughs> a bomb. <laughs> what, the sandbox? Uh-huh. No. Yeah. What What happened? My dad brought down these, these uh, mortars that, that didn't, you know, that it was the part that shoots out of the cannon that makes the boom. Before, yeah. Like, it was What that. do they call that? Dude, it wasn't. What is that? It was just a mortar it's like a, without the firework part. You know, like at the supercrosses where they're like. But normally it was a firework. So what did he just shot just the ball out? So they make it. You know, like the supercrosses where they they sh they sh at the opening ceremonies they yeah. shoot the ones up that go bow. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have anything, but they're just loud as shit when okay. they're singing the, na the you know the national anthem. So it's like the Buccaneers when they score a. Touchdown. Boom. Boom like boom. a cannon going cannon on. Going there on. you go. Okay. That's what it's like. Yeah. And we put it in this 50-gallon barrel, hammered a hole in the top of it, and taped it to the side, dropped it down in and there. And it went off. Oh. Uh, it blew the lid. It blew the lid off about 150 foot in the air, five lanes across the track. It was wicked. I would have paid money to see that. His, my dad said his dude uh, wanted, wanted to kill some raccoons under his barn. <laughs> the dude threw it under there, and it cracked his whole barn down the middle of his concrete. Oh, my Lord. We got to get the Scrooge on the show, man. No joke. We should have had him call tonight because we were telling him on the first one, <laughs> and he was kind of excited. He's like, okay. All right. He might be listening, though. He's yeah. liable to call. If I gave him the number, he'd call. We would, you know what though, Scrooge. Scrooge is one of them people. He'll talk for an hour. They just run with it, bub. Yeah, that's not bad though. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> that's not bad though. We got. Uh, sorry, guys, getting an update here. Um, so just a couple minutes away, we got Devin Simonson coming on. Uh, we are at the Moto Sandbox Live, courtesy of Jason Baker at Dream Tracks. And uh, if you guys are looking for a track, if you got a major rad piece of property, you guys want to have a, an awesome place to do some training, you want a uh, track to be built for you, you need to call Jason Baker. He's your guy. I'm watching the video right now. You guys would not believe this. Oh, that was it? Oh, there it goes. Wow. That's a 50 gallon drum. At, that is crazy. At first, like, it just, like, goes, psh, and boom. Then it blows. That is crazy, man. See, now, we need to do, we, when we do a show, I told you, hey, guys at home, check this out. I the told videos. you, well, remember, I told you I wanted to do an outside show. Yeah. I want to do that. Like, like we'll cool put the lights. Videos in? That'd be sick. Well, no, I want to do a show outside. And, like, something like that we could have in the show as part of it. Yeah. I mean, when have you ever seen that happen, dude? <laughs> right? I mean, that's crazy. Here's another view of it. I wish I could show this to you guys. This is wild. So, what is it? Like a five-gallon um, paint bucket? No, it's a 55-gallon VP Oh, 55? Oh, man. And that thing blew that far? <laughs> what did you? All you had in there was the one? I feel like you're lying to me, right? <laughs> no. Uh, huh? I ain't lying. I ran like four scuffles in that. You did? You, <laughs> that, oh, that was you that was running? Oh, okay. All right. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so if you guys are at home and you're trying to find a guy that can build a track for you, Sean Rife, he can come and help you. And he is with Dream Tracks. So, 
we can get them on out there and uh, get you a design done. Jason Baker will hook you up. And, uh, yeah, like I said, man, he's one of the best in the business. He's the guy. Um, and Moto Sandbox is extraordinary. It's uh awesome place to be, man. I love coming here. It's always a good yeah, time, too. It always is. Tonight we're uh like always I said, will be. Always will be. Always will be. Um so we're gonna get the poodle. He's fixing to call us right now. The poodle? That's what we call him, the poodle, old really? Devin Simon. Yeah, seriously. He's a good dude though. Uh we're gonna have him come on the show here in just a second. Um uh, more exciting stuff is like we were talking about before the Motocross of Nations. We got the Monster Energy Cup, we got Supercross coming. Um, w the football last night was absolutely insane. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. It's so much stuff I can't even remember it. Is that that's not good? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so like two weeks ago, I was telling you how man, what you know? Where do you get all these different to like topics and and subjects, whatever you want to call them, to talk about? A lot of it is just paying attention around you. Yeah. You know. Dude, I got a story for you that I meant to tell I you. Sean, I never told you this story. This would be good for them, too, because they'll, they'll probably start laughing. Um, so I'm at Publix, dude. Do you shop at Publix? No, nah, I mean. I guess I shouldn't even say the grocery store. I need to go there but or whatever. I was at the grocery store there. How's that? Um, so I'm going. I'm, I'm in the frozen food aisle. You guys, this is going to blow you away. Uh, so, like, when I go shopping, I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those people that – I go in, I know right what I want, right? Yeah. I go right to it. I get it. I put it in out. the cart. Yeah, I'm gone. Like, if I could just say, hey, bring that to my house, which I think there's a way to do that. Yeah. I mean, that would probably work better for me because I'm always on the run. I got to run you down all the time. Oh. <laughs> Took you a minute. Uh, so, but anyway, so I'm coming down this aisle, right? And uh, it's frozen foods. I'm getting me some lean cuisines, man. I'm trying to tighten up a little bit. And <laughs> And uh, so I'm standing there and this lady, like I had already seen her and uh, she was on the phone or at least she was acting like she was on the phone, whatever. Okay. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but it looked like she was on the phone. So I'm standing there and I'm picking out this lean cuisine and I'm like, okay, cool. I got this one. I'm like trying to figure out what I want. Right. And I hear this lady coming. So I look over and she's on her phone. It's the same lady as before. Looking like she's in her pajamas. All right. And, uh, so, you know, like I eavesdrop, like I heard everything, you know? So she's like, oh, uh, you know, her, whoever her daughter was, right? Oh, wants to get her belly button pierced. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm in a grocery store. Yeah. Right. So then I keep listening because now she's definitely got my attention. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world's going on here? We're talking about this and we're in a grocery store. Next thing you know, man, this crazy woman is talking about how some dude had ripped out nipple rings from her. I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying. Hey, I'm in, I'm in the grocery store. I'm trying to get my groceries. I could not believe that someone would go through a grocery store talking about that. Never in my life. 2000. Oh, don't even take me there. 2018. <laughs> we got 19 coming. I don't know what I'm going to – when it comes to 2020, I think I'm just going to call it 20. I ain't going to call it 2020 because that just don't sound – I'm just going to say, man, we're in 20 right now. 20 squared. That's what we got to call it, bub. That's what they're going to say, 2021. 20, is that what it is? They're not going to say 2021. No. They're going to say 21. I'm saying like the next year. What do you mean? It's 20. I can't even hear you. It's 22. 22. Like, so we're going to start 20, at 20. So we're going to go – so there's not going to be any more of like – 2018 it's not going to be 2020 we're going to be like a b c fucking and that's it 23 <laughs> i'll tell you what i remember when 2000 hit you remember all that y2k stuff you, you don't even remember that you're too young Y2K. what are you falling asleep on me over there sean rife I'm good. listen man we're only an hour into the show i hear you i gotta get you some domino's pizza no. you guys remember show number one domino's pizza had our back <laughs> They brought in pizzas, and boy, we were loving it. You guys missed out, I'll tell you right now. Well, oh, so there you go. He ain't missing out, but I'm telling you, it was good. And, uh, huh? It's pretty good. It ain't that bad, man. It's it's pretty good, I tell you what. And being out here in the sticks in Groveland, 
Hey, hey we can go down there to uh, the corner store. You yeah. got a corner store? I bet you got a story about the corner store. Bunch of <laughs> endless amounts, huh? See, that's what we got to have is something like that, Sean. That's why we're going from here to there because we're going to tell the story of what's happening as we go there. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. See? This is what I'm talking about. I need another microphone. Brittany, you got a microphone? <laughs> right there it is. There you go. We're going to get some more microphones. We're going to have some more people in. Poy Dog wants us down there on his show. Check this out. He says, next Wednesday, both of you is done. How far is it? <sighs> he's down there by Poy Dog. the tracks and trails. Dude, there. I'm pretty sure he's like a good way. Uh so, hey, you have to send me uh, your address there, Poy Dog, so I can check it out, bub. If you're not really that far, I might stop down. I like getting on the microphone and talking, man. I done said that like 50 times tonight. Is that just because I'm so like so excited about it and I love to do it? Probably a good good uh, possibility. Where's uh our phone call guy? Did he bail on us? He's probably on Snapchat or something. You know what, man? Old boy come down and stayed at my house for a week, did some training, Moto Institute, right? He was a Snapchatting fool. Uh, I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Hey, what's this new – you know what? That brings me to a subject. I want your – you can fill in on this too. You probably done heard this, and I think it's a crock of shit. What? Here we go. What is clout? Clout? Clout. Not Luke Clout, but what is clout? Clout is – Uh-oh, I got collateral. an answer. Is it? I think like clout is stuff you have or have gained big white. If you're watching, here's your answer. So, Man. so clout is something you've gained. So if you end up with a really nice outfit, you've gained that. So you can yeah. call that clout. Yeah. If you've got a badass pair of sunshades, right? Sunglasses, whatever you want to call. I, I think that's, that's clout. I think, okay. That's the new thing. You know that, don't you? Yeah, my like clout or what? Yeah, or how dude. they say it? What they do? I don't even know. I just guessed that, but well, that's what she knows. She just said it. What did you say? Clout. No, it ain't that. It's clout. No. <laughs> she she knows. Anyways, uh, but yeah, it's so like I'm on. I was checking some stuff out. I get on. You know, I'm not a like huge social media guy, but I check stuff out and I kind of I'm like one of the people that ventures. I just look at photos and I just keep on going. And, I see these kids are like, oh, check out this clout. What they got? Just I don't even know. Just like a selfie of themselves, man. Clout. Oh, they they they've got it all wrong. Uh, is it okay? Can you tell them that, please? Because uh, they don't want to hear me tell them. Yeah, that's why we're here. We're here. We're starting here. We're going there. Clout, we gotta tell them. I mean, that's collateral clout to me. Yeah, collateral. So you're I handing mean, it over to me. It's not just money in your pocket. It's it's what you have. You know, if you own a house or you you know you're on your way to it, collateral. That's because it used to be. Uh, what did they say? Where you at, Big White? Help me out. I forget what they used to say, but they had another one. It was. Uh, dear Lord, I can't believe I've lost my train of thought now. Not clout, but it was something else that they were saying. Not bling. Well, bling was one for a while. A long time ago. <laughs> you got to have the bling in the grill. So now it's clout. In a status, good or bad, but it's level type stuff. So, oh, there it is. Swag. Swag. Okay, so they went. Swag? Yes, so. Okay, so that's not the same as clout. Okay, well, that's what they have replaced it with, bub. They replaced swag You know who clout. could tell us about this is the poodle. He he uses it in, in phrases. We could get the poodle on the line if he'll call. The poodle's slacking on us, by the way, people at home. Swag. That's been around. So swag. Okay, so they they replaced swag with clout. And I, I my thing is, like, when I hear clout, I think of Luke Clout, the racer. Uh -huh. What happened to that dude? I don't know. Wasn't he in like Australia? He I was in know. Australia, I, I think, and then I don't even know what happened from there. I don't know much about him. I thought you raced him. Who was I after you? I might have, but. You don't even remember. You hit your noggin too many times? I remember the name for sure. You do? Road Luke Yamaha. Clout. 
Yeah, he rode a Yamaha. He was a bad unit, dude. Yeah, so swag was like the word. We had bling when I was coming up. It's like, oh, check out my bling. And then they had all like the fake grills and all that. You remember that stuff? Yeah. Bling, well, bling, bling. Yeah. Lil Wayne made that word a word in the dictionary. Did you ever hear that song? Um, That's crazy. With, uh, man, I forget how it went. I'll remember it in a minute. When I do, I'm going to tell it to you. But, I, hey, I'm a music guy, too. Yeah. I got a bunch of music, too, that we can play that uh, that I've thrown in the computer here that we have not had in the past. We didn't have it. Episode, really? episode number one, dude, we were a little bit rough. We were a little bit rough. But we got it figured out now. Uh, so as we go through the rest of the year, Sean, we got some stuff coming up. We got weather change going on. Yeah. What's your thoughts on weather change, man, in Florida? I tell you what, it's like 150 degrees outside. Oh, dude. What do you do to cool down when you get hot out there? Let's let's tell the people at home some I'll tell secrets. You the best way to do it. Because you're from up north, so what you do is probably different than what I do. The best way to do it. Northerners. Get out guys. there early. Uh oh. You know, if early, you're out there early at eight bird. o'clock or something, eight like o'clock. seven seven eight o'clock is by that time. You know what I mean? You, you get out it. there at eleven. You're it's done. It's a wrap. You're done. It's too hot. Like on Sunday or something, I just get up, chill yeah. for a little bit, go outside, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and you're like, wow. What? But if you're out there in the morning, it's yeah. still hot, but you ride that heat. All and, the way through. And, I mean, it's still hot. Don't get me, You're sweating. You, know, you drink water, plenty of water. Hey, your boy Meatloaf was out there trying to set up these sound pad things. <laughs> boy, I was busting the sweat, man. I can't wait for that weather change, Sean Rife. Uh, hey, you know what, though? There's another story. I come up to Ohio. I'll find out what some cold weather was. Yeah, this dude had me trying to ride out there in the snow. I had you out there, though. You were doing it. Like, it was a little bit slick, but you were getting it done. I'm pretty sure we got into an argument or something, and it made you ride the bike. And you were like, I did. wow, my hands are smoked. Yeah, they were. They were freezing. <laughs> I think I did it with no gloves, yeah, too. No gloves. I was just like, I got this. No problem. Uh-huh. And then like, Different when you're standing there with them in your pocket. Yeah, boy. <laughs> and then, hey, how about you? What was that? A goat you had? What were those things? Sheep? Goat. What'd you have? I had some goats. Dude, I want to have a little farm or something. Is it fun to have a goat? What do they do? What do goats just even do? Bah. Bah. <laughs> Oh, I love oh, it. I had some funny times with goats, though. We had a miniature one, like a pygmy goat, I think is what it's called. It had horns. That's the one I'm talking and about. This thing would ram you. Oh, dude. No, that's what he did because it was cold out. We did the riding, right? Uh-huh. And I remember I went outside for something, <laughs> and that sucker, he wanted to get me, man. He wasn't yeah, playing that's... around, Sean. No joke. He come right at me with them horns. I said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you ain't getting me." I done turned him around the other way, grabbed him by the horn. What do you think? Did you ever do that? Oh yeah, I used you to did? pick him up and swing him around. No, yeah, I did. No, you I did swear not. To God. He must have been real small. Yeah, he was like half the size of a goat. Yeah, like not not that small. Well, when I got it's there, about fifty pounds. Yeah, that's about right. At least. That's about when I was there. Like a big dog. Yeah. He's like a big dog, big but he's dog. got them horns. With horns, I grab him by his horns like this and yeah. start spinning circles and get him oh. off the ground. See, I'd have paid money to see something <laughs> like that, Bob. See now, but uh, he was cool with me. Yeah, he'd run, he'd come up to me and bump me in the leg like that's a what cat. he did to me. He just kind of uh, like bump over into you with his head. Yeah, like he wants like a ram. It. Yeah, he was cool. Dodge Ram, Ram Tough. He you want to be a sponsor on the From Here to There show? Ram Tough, ram Dodge. Tough. Drive the fifteen hundred. You don't like it? We got a twenty five hundred. <laughs> We're gonna get some people on here, Sean, that are gonna help us out. Um, and uh, I want to take the show. I want to do some stuff, man. You know what I'd like to do? There's got to be a way to do it. For the week of the mini Olympics, I'd like to do the show at Gatorback. Only thing is, we gotta have Wi-Fi. I wonder if we could do that. I got a hotspot on my phone, <laughs> but Dude. I don't think Sprint gets service there. Well, I was just going to say, because I got Verizon, and it does. It does work there. Well, 
You got a hot spot? Yep. Unlimited. I got it. Oh, there you are. We can do it. Live action. Um, right out by the dang Thor's tower. Huh? <laughs> by the Thor tower? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know, man. Get us up on top of the Dunlop tire. I would think, well, <laughs> I think if we were going to do it, I almost feel like we could go into the the main tower. But they they do that already. What do you mean? Do something different. Well, yeah, but if we were in a, or at least up there, then we'd have good reception. I think we just probably could get the show done if we do that and do the show at like six different spots around the place, just to show what's going on. That would be cool. Are you going to that? I don't know. You don't know. I'm. I'm. I'll be there. I'm used to seeing you there though, Sean. When you don't show up to stuff. It worries me a little bit. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I know the old Scrooge, if he was in town, he'd be there. Ah, uh, there ain't much I haven't showed up for.
or and then we'll yep. talk about both. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, we got a couple things that we're going to touch on for you here. We were out there checking out the sandbox. We had to make sure everything's good, right? Yes, Courtesy sir. of Jason Baker. That's something that we do. We like to make sure things stay good around here. So uh, we went outside there and checked it out. So uh, everything is good, and uh, we're going to go back to some things we brought up earlier. Sean, let's talk about that football game last night, bub. I want to I want to get onto that because Mayfield he really impressed me, dude. Man, personally, I think I got I got to hear the Browns are, are going to hit a couple in a row for real because like the amount of hype that's that's in them right now and and the 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 change of the stadium when when Mayfield took the field. Yeah. Um, they're fired you can up. Just hear it on TV. I was watching on my phone. I could hear it. When he made that first pass, eruption. Oh, dude, it was. So now they're going to ride this wave. Yep. And now it's really going to come down to, like, how their offense pairs up to other defenses and how their defense pairs up to other offenses, you know. it's Yeah. Now I think they're in good hands. Their wide receivers are fine. I, I've seen plenty of catches that were, that were good. gnarly. I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's not like they can't catch the ball. Um, what, about the, what about the Jets side of it, though? I mean, so what happened was they go into the game, they score a couple touchdowns. Get comfortable. Momentum changes. Now they're like, oh, scrambling. We got this dude in. This, this crowd's going crazy, blah, blah, blah. Before yeah. they're just watching in, in disbelief. Like they're losing again. Then they saw life and they're like, boom, boom. Oh. And their heart started throbbing. Yeah, but when Mayfield come in there, it was over. That's what I'm saying. That dude's on a different level, man. You know, and good. for me, like, I ain't even watched a lot of football because I've been busy. I've been working on Sundays and stuff. But I watched that game last night. And when I watch stuff like that, like, it don't matter if it's a racing event. It don't matter if it's football, baseball, soccer, whatever. I like to get excited about it. And if, if I'm watching the game and I can't seem to get any excitement out of that game, you can't, you get bored with it, man. Right. And at first, I'll be honest with you, before halftime, I had already turned it off. I don't know where you were at. But I know when it come down to halftime, I, I was like, dude, I can't watch this no I more. I come in the beginning of the third quarter. Oh, see? You've seen all the good stuff. I mean. Dude came in like the last drive of the second quarter, took him down to a field goal. Yeah. Went in. But it, it was it was interesting because I almost feel like, you know, when you're involved with a, with a team sport like that, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that when people get involved with a team sport like that, uh whoever the guy is like the quarterback in football right? right they're normally like your main guy yeah and for me when i watch the games i feel like if the quarterback is syncing together with the running back and the wide outs you know what i mean and everything is going together as one i feel like that's Changes. when yeah and like when mayfield come in i feel like that click happened i watched it like almost, it was i even got a phone call from a buddy of mine he calls me up he goes dude did you see that and i'm like no i didn't because i turned it off but you the know the good thing about it is uh-huh they know they know what he can do with the offense with the you know they do scrimmages they practice a, yeah. a long time we guarantee you that right so they knew pretty much they were just following the rules man yeah had to keep this dude in and and, and that was it I think they're for the when it comes down, oh, okay. the the running game I think was a little off. It wasn't horrible, but I know they could do better than that. They got some good backs. Yeah. Um, and then that's for the Jets, I they that quarterback that they got that dude's a rookie too, isn't he? Pretty sure that Darnold or whatever that dude. I think he's a rookie too, or maybe he's like this is his first Second, time starting yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I feel like he like fell apart, dude. Man, they were running you it know? down there though. I feel like whenever you're – yeah. They were getting it downfield. They just – They didn't make it happen. Quite making it. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's where, you know, it hurt them because they would get in that position and then they just totally blow it. And you know, like I know from doing stuff, if you're mentally strong, right, and you're on a roll, things go good. But as soon as, like, that whole shift happens, um, it, it – Downhill. It, you're like downhill and then you have to like catch yourself and make it come back uphill coasting well yeah if you're going downhill yeah but if you don't want to like slam the brakes you don't want to be coasting hit a UE. you don't want to be coasting though 
starting at the bottom of that you weed back up you you're gotta like come on wow. back up and for me i feel like if you know if you're gonna get out front you got a lead like that right like they had i don't think you really should fall apart and when you're set up that way i feel like you should get comfortable right start getting better and get yeah get better man and um but it's I, I've never been in that predicament. I guess I should say. It is say. a team sport, yeah. so everybody's different out there on the field. And everybody's got to pitch in. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like when we were doing these, the sound. <laughs> we all had to pitch in. <laughs> Thank goodness we had help for that. But, um, you know, I'm doing fantasy football this year. Are you? I got uh, two leagues. You know, I beat Big White. You know, I know he's watching right now. I beat Big White this week. That's, like, unheard of. You don't beat Big White at nothing. Oh, by the way, guys, if you were – I forgot about this. If you were listening to uh, the first show, remember I put a bounty on Big White on that motocross yeah. dirt bike game? Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, nobody, as far as I know, Big White, you correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think anybody was able to beat him. So no what? hat, no bulletproof threads hat going out tonight. So what I was going to do was – I'm thinking about throwing like a hundred bucks out there, hundred bucks, and you can go run against Big White. See what you got. If you beat him, I give you a hundred bucks. If not, <laughs> it'll stay inside of the hat, and I might take it up more. Run. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna beat him. What's yeah. up? <laughs> Oh, I tell you right man. now, this show is going to have to make it far around far <laughs> for around to find that guy that's going to find beat the guy. him. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's in his own league, man, you know. I wish we had Big White here tonight. I miss Big White, man. You know, that's our producer. That's our guy that makes it happen behind the scenes. He's the one that's got us fine-tuned in, too. <laughs> he did all the work. He didn't do all the work, <laughs> but what he did is he directed me in the way to do the work to do it right, uh, and he assisted. So that's good enough for me. Um, yeah, he does He does have leadership. I'm reading some comments here. Um, what's his name? Uh quarterback baker uh baker mayfield. mayfield mayfield does he's got leadership quality that's what that was that i was trying to find leadership quality that's uh and you know you, it's not only in football it's in all them team sports oh yeah even if you're like fighting is not really a team sport but they kind of have a team when they're training and on defense like there's not a there's not a leader on defense, but right. most teams that are good on defense get sacks and really front line strong. They yeah. have a linebacker or somebody that's that stands out. Yeah, like hey, this is hey, calling plays out there, knowing visualize a veteran. And that's what you gotta have when you veteran. have when you have that. Then you have the direction. When you get the direction, then you can bring along the rest of it. Until you have that, I feel like you're missing that key. You know, it's like when you, when you get to a mansion, it's like, here, I'll give you 50 keys. Huh. If you got the right one, you get in. Can't find the right one, you don't get in. You got 20 seconds. Boom. I feel like it's the same way. You got to have I'm that key. I think I'm going through all 50. Really quick? Ah, <laughs> 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 you're trying to get up in there, I know. Because you might hit it about seven or eight. You might. You never know, man. S speed. But that's, uh, you know, having a captain like that, having someone – and any anything you're doing, man, you having can, a mentor, I guess you could call him a mentor because he's the guy in charge, right? Yeah. Really. You could see, like, in Mayfield when he come off the bench, like, mm -hmm. he wasn't like – I mean, yeah, he was pumped when he when he scored and, and he even caught a two-point conversion. Dude, did you see that? But he, oh, when he man. Took his, when he took his helmet off, he was just focused. You could tell he was ready for what was next. Like, okay, right. I'm at 12 now or 13. I need, yeah. I need nine more. I need right. 10 more. Like he was focused he was picking on the them next, off. next point. For he sure. was, he was picking them off. Um, the that one, go ahead. The pass over the middle. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. It was the, like a 40 yard pass over the middle. Dude was watching the ball, jumped up, caught it over the back of dude's head. Boom, pulled it up and over. That was the first score that happened in the third quarter, I believe. I think so. Went up and over him, got it, yeah, brought boom, it in. Flipped down. Yep. Yep. And well, that they were was down at like the one or something. Something like that. Or, and then they went in. But I think the play for me out of what I watched, because I ended up actually falling asleep at the end. Um, but for me, for what I had made it to 
um, that play where they threw it back to him. They did like the, what do they call that, a wildcat? Back to the two-point conversion? Yeah. Is that what that was? I thought yeah. it was. That wasn't for the touchdown? No. Nah. That was two points? Yeah. Well, anyways, that there was, uh, I think, the play of the game. I thought it was awesome myself. You know, I think that. Because that led into the lead they had. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that turned it. Instead of getting one point there, they got tied. two. It was tied after yeah. that. So then it was like, okay, we ran you down. Now we're right there with you. Right. Now we're going to keep on running away from you. For me, I think that that made the difference in the game. From what I can see, Sean. Uh, I like I said, I ain't watched a whole lot of football from what I've watched, though. They ran with the energy there because that they threw it. that touchdown. They scored that touchdown. They were pumped. They said, shit, we're doing a two-point conversion, bud. And that was the end of that. Then did something wild. The pitch, then the pitch, and yeah. the throw, and they were, it was over. It was over. Um. All right, guys, here we go. It's uh, 840. We're 10 minutes late on our block. <laughs> We're 10 minutes late right now. I think that's because we took a little break there for a second. Uh, so local block for the next 10 minutes. If you got a local company, you're out there in the community, you're listening in right now, uh, local block, this is your chance to call in. 863-226-1969. Just like my buddy Ronnie Mack. I can't believe we got that number. I still can't. 863-226-1969. Give us a call. And uh, let's get these companies out there. I want to help you guys get your name out there and uh, make it happen. This is your 10 minutes. This is your 10 minutes. Uh, so we're going to go till 852. And then we'll go back to our conversation. I'm ready. I'm excited. Who's calling in? First caller. Let's go. Get it on. 863-226-1969. In the meantime, Dream Tracks. That's where it's at. If you guys are at home, you want to build a track, you want the guy to do it the right way, make it badass, call Jason Baker. He'll come on out there and dial it right in for you. Yeah. All right. He'll bring Sean Rife for you. You guys want to meet Sean Rife in person? He's a celebrity now. He's a big guy here. We're going to make we're, <laughs> we're going to put you him in celebrity me. status now. We're going to take him up top. Get me to Hollywood. Hey, you know I'm who you remind me of? Who? You could be that dude. You remember, you know uh old Brendan Schaub, old uh Big Brown. No. That's what they call him. I don't know. You him. Remind me of that dude cuz he's he? he used to be a UFC fighter. Now he does that fighter and the kid. Uh podcast show. Like you don't remind me of him looks wise. But once you get going on a subject, you remind me of him. <laughs> and he's he's interesting to listen to, too, man. He's uh, Brandon a good, that's Schaub. A, yeah, Brendan Schaub. Fire uh, and the kid. I got something for you here. What's up? Ravens were with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Lewis was yeah. a beast. Uh-huh. People that, like that. Yeah, that's elevate the level of play from all their from their teammates. Yeah, oh yeah. Ray Lewis was a monster at getting Dude. knowing what was going on. He was brutal, man. He was brutal. You know? I remember watching that guy play and like you could watch him hit some people and you could feel it. You're like, Whoa. He hit somebody so hard when he did that dance or whatever where he went like the the Falcon or the Raven. Yeah. I thought he was going to start flying, mother. Hey, but he had a couple moves that he did. If he hit you hard, boy, he'd come up out of there. And they got photos of that, too, because uh -huh. he always had something tricky for him. Oh, he smacks some people. <laughs> but, you know, <clears throat> and that's that's what, like, Big White's saying there with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. It's uh, right back to what we said before, that leadership, man. And when you get a guy that's got that mentality, he can do it. The whole game could be horrible. You know, it's kind of like I remember being a kid and playing baseball and I'd have a bad game, right? And you go home and you're like, man, what can I do to fix that? You know? Right. And then you kind of just think about it and you're like, man, I got to have a different mentality. I can't go in there wondering if I'm going to do good or yeah, I got to go in there and trust what I know. Even if it's decent, it's bad. Yeah. You set yourself up for failure before you fail and then you're – then, the you're, then you're starting here. The whole here. thing was a failure. Yeah. 
At least if you try something and you fail, but you're not thinking failure, yeah. you don't know you're going to fail. Well. Before you get there. Yeah, You just right. run into failure you and you're like, damn, what am I going to do now? Yeah, you just go into it and then that's when you got to plow through it. Yeah. If you don't plow through it, you get stuck. But if you go through something and you're thinking you're failing yeah. when you get there, you're failing the whole time until you fail. Oof. That is so true. Because you're like, oh. I like how you said that, Rife. That's a good one. You need that would be a good song right there. <laughs> you can't fail if you don't bring it if you right? Is that what you're saying? Well, you, you, don't, even, you fail. don't even let it cross your mind. You fail, but you're not beating you yourself. You fail all of a sudden or out of nowhere. Right. Then you have a bridge to cross. Right. I think. If you fail all the way until you're like, oh, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this right. sucks. When you get to something that really sucks, now you're really failing and That's you're no like no good. I know what you're saying. And, you know, from doing stuff and, and trying different stuff, I know exactly what you're talking about because there's been times where, like I said, if you doubt yourself, you go in there and you have a bad game or whatever, you know. And I think for me. I, I relate that to riding in the mud. Like Yeah. Like, you go into the race day and it's muddy and you're like, wow, this is going to suck. Guess what? Uh-huh. It sucked. It's but no sometimes good. you just be like, oh, it's all right. And then you and ride you really rip good. and you're like, that was pretty fun. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I think out of mud races, I think Dade City would be the one that was always a muddy one when it did rain. I've it never been so there. Gnarly. Yeah, it was gnarly. Been there some night races. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying, when it comes down to like the guys that do the UFC and whatnot, and even the women, right? They have a team too. Oh, yeah. That they train with. For sure. How about, like I brought up earlier, old Conor McGregor? fixing to go at it what were you saying about somebody bought because I, I caught quite a bit of that the uh press conference deal yeah but you said something about a t-shirt what in the world so mcgregor was calling dude out saying that because he was just that. a fanboy. yeah buying his t-shirts uh-huh. you know blah 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 you were just buying my t-shirts he's you yeah. know just saying how he's gonna wreck them and stuff he brought his own belts yeah mcgregor is He's taking shots on the damn press con- at the press conference. With Dana White. Trying to hand dude the shot. Like, With Dana White. Who could do He's that? Got a, who does that? He's got new whiskey. You imagine like Tomac or somebody, you know, 450, 250 yeah. guy before the fight, before A1 press. Oh, oh I'm about to hit a shot of this whiskey. No, people would fall apart, dude. Oh. People would fall apart. But I guess you're fighting and you're going in there to get fucked up anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> is that how you gotta look at it you're going in there and get fucked up you're gonna get your face pounded either way no matter who you are you're gonna get hit at least once or twice yeah unless yeah especially with them two man that's gonna be brutal dude wants to take him to the ground well yeah because here's the thing with connor dude connor a, he can't fight on the ground i'm i and listen I, I don't even know he might even listen in who knows <laughs> we're all over hey, we're on itunes we're all over so you never know he might hear it but i'm gonna tell you right now you're good, old boy man. cannot fight on the ground he can't do it. He can't fight on the ground. And I think that hurts him. He said when he's he... got a glass jaw. What? Dude that he's fighting. He told him he's got a glass jaw. Connor told him that? Why don't I remember that? Said he's going he's gonna shatter Must have been his one glass part that jaw. I missed. <laughs> I think that they're 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 saying, Oh, the biggest fight, biggest fight, biggest fight. Well, don't we hear that every freaking every time? time? Every freaking every time. Every time. Man. And I don't I don't know. I mean I thought John Jones was the man. That's you know the why one they that brought. That they, they, I thought he brought all the big numbers, and now they're all oh, Connor brought them. Why? Because he fought with Floyd. But listen, this is why. This is why they say that, and they're going to say that till the end of time. What to get you to watch? Because UFC and Tap Out, each person that they sell to and they, that buys that, and uh-huh. every single day, I yeah. guarantee you, a new person watches a UFC video. Well, so then they're growing hugely so that's why they say oh biggest fight in ufc history because of the numbers and that's just what they're going it's about. never going to be less because there's always more people. it's always more the population's growing it's always going to be the biggest fight in history every single trip this is true and with connor like i said with connor fighting with floyd that's made it even more. I, I don't think that I personally didn't think that was the biggest boxing fight in history ever. I didn't either. Ever. I think the one that just went down, the one with Canelo, did you see that? I didn't, no, I didn't see that. Him and GGG? Oh, my Lord, dude. It was but, oh, brutal. 
Brutal. I'm talking like stuff that you watch and you're going, man, I'm glad that ain't me. <laughs> know what I mean? But that's uh, that's the difference between them guys, you know, and, and people who don't train for it and people who don't do it. And um, I think it's going to be a heck of a brawl myself, man, when it comes down to Connor and Khabib. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You all right over there, Sean? Right. <laughs> we ain't done yet, but come on now. I'm good. Uh, but, yeah, I think that, you know, when you talk about that, I think uh, it's going to be interesting. I think – I'm going to give you my predictions, and this is – if Connor doesn't go to the ground, this is my predictions. Connor knocks him out second round. I'm going to call it right now, episode two, FHTT show. And you know why I think it might happen sooner? If it doesn't happen sooner uh-huh. and the fight goes on, uh-huh. I think dude might get him just because of the fact once you get tired upstairs, yeah, you're tired everywhere. Yeah, if it you go starts to the ground, up here. And goes, <laughs> and, and, yeah, it goes to there, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. So, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you, you're riding a dirt bike. Uh-huh. The first thing gets tired is what? Your brain. Yep. And then your arms. And then you fall apart. And if he does that, we could see Connor get beat, dude. Yeah. But, like the Diaz fight. But That's the what experience happened. he gained, the boxing experience that he gained mentally uh-huh. from fl- fighting Floyd – they're going to go toe-to-toe right off rip unless dude lunges at him and gets him down. That's the only so thing he's So they're going to be squared off. Yeah. It's just a matter of what happens. That's just, that's just how it's going to go unless yeah. they wide open. Foof. They ain't going to just wide open and, and clinch. So you think Connor comes out and his, his crawling, his crouch, whatever you want to call it, you know, where he gets down, like almost on all fours, and he, like, crawls at you? Oh, probably. Just to mess with him. Guaranteed. I don't know that. It's like a ritual. I I just don't know I would do that against Khabib, man. Why not? I don't know. He does it before the fight starts, don't he? Yeah, but he does it like going as soon as they like, okay, fight, whatever. He like does it up to them. Uh, Sometimes. I don't know. That kind of worries me a little bit. But, um, yeah, old Connor, he got a new whiskey. I just think he's a cocky fucker. Oh, well, He's Irish, dude. He, huh? Proper 12. Yeah, proper 12, dude. Is uh, We're going to get some. They have it. Is it in? It's Is it here in the U.S.? This one's kind of black. Okay. If it's in the U.S., we need to get some for the next show. Yes. We'll do it. Seriously. Okay. We'll try it out. What do you think about that? You like whiskey, Sean? No. You don't? No. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I like whiskey. Whiskey's good, man. Hell no. Bud Light. I know. You got, you're letting your Bud Light get cold or warm over there. It was cold. Yeah, now it's getting a, warm on I you. About that you need to open right? that up. Don't let that sit there too long now. Uh, you can chug it right here. You can. Down the head. You, it's kind of cold. You know, we, Todd we could. You know, Todd Freeberg told oh my, my dad Lord. one day. Oh, my he, Lord. He, he told him he ain't never had brain freeze. My dude will get a 32 ounce. And hit it hard. Slushy. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Smack him. Gone. You know what he can put down that'll really scare you? Know you know you're, those. I know you're gonna tell me. Uh, yep. Thirty-two ounce Gatorade. Okay. Thirty-two ounce Gatorade. One hit. It'll scare you. Todd Freeberg. Zach's dad. Dude. Brutal. Good dude, huh? Good dude though. Oh yeah, man. Especially on a hot day. Big White I wants remember, us to bring moonshine on the show. I don't oh think we would do that. Would turn the show. The show would go crazy. We'd have, we would have plenty. Of, hey, you know what? If we had two more microphones right now, think about what we could be talking about. If we had two, oh huh? Definitely with old boy. We'd have to put explicit. We would have to put explicit, and we'd have to make sure language. that explicit language. If, <laughs> We're getting hundred thousand kids grounded. Oh man, can't watch that. Turn that off. What do you think? Oh, for sure. I like that it's on iTunes now because once I put it on there, I went back on my phone and I listened to it, to the first one. I like the fact that it's on there, dude. I think once I get it on there, I'll go back and just listen to it. I don't even watch it. I don't, like, watch the video. Uh, I just like to hear it because that's all that matters. I mean, we're here. We're yeah. live, but 
at the end of the day, we got to hear what we're talking about. Right. I think that's important. I Go back and review it. Um, so, anyways, man, I think Connor is going to take him down second round. I think I'll give him a knockout. What are you going with? Uh, Let's give our predictions because I know people are really hot about the subject right now. And I want people to make sure they know what we're thinking. I, I don't like giving opinions on that. You don't like giving an opinion on that? Why? Why not? Because I don't know. Oh, so you, in, <laughs> instead of... Hey, the Mayweather and McGregor? Yeah. I knew. You did? Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you know? When you oh, said, when Sean Reif pulls up the internet and he's on Google and the first thing that pops up is McGregor Mayweather, what in the world went through your mind? He's that it was stupid. official. That it was official. I say he's stupid. Who? McGregor stupid. But do you feel that he did better than you thought that he uh, would he did better than i thought but it's because mayweather what just you know what i mean like i think he didn't i think he was a little bit afraid he didn't want to catch one or two well well because that, that left is strong i so i think with with the the caution of being afraid it kept him away mm -hmm. so then he just was on defense. Once yeah. he saw, once he saw them eyes start going back to normal, then he started crossing them for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, here, let me throw this left. Let me throw this right. I'll get yeah. you with the jab then, right then, here. Pop, pop, pop. Something yeah, like I that. I mean, I thought. Is that how that goes? Pop, 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 pop. Is that how quick I it didn't, happens? I didn't mind the fight. And I, I uh -huh. personally, I was like, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? But. When it came down to, like, the press conferences and this dude talking yeah. about he's about to smoke this guy, that'd be like, that'd be like, I'm, I'm telling you, Caleb Russell's a bad man. But he rides that'd be good. Like him, he rides good. That'd be like him challenging Tomac Oof. or Roxon or Barsha Oof. or any of them straight up and being like, and then going to the press conference, like, I'm going to fuck these boys up. They ain't got it on me. He wow. wouldn't... He, you know what I, I mean? I couldn't see that going down because I get what you're saying. No, I'm just saying he's he's probably the most dominant guy in the woods that, in that to, yeah. to this day. And so think, that uh, relates to boxing, which UFC to boxing, yeah. woods to moto. Like, yeah. I think that when it comes to the fighting, though, I think that's why they do it. They, they're they trying to pump the fight up, man. And I think that, you know what, when you're, you're an adult, obviously, when you're a fighter like that and you got like – stuff going on at home and you're living a normal life right well they got to put their self in that mindset to even fight don't they like what if you what if they don't what if they don't find that aggression against their competitor like do you feel like when conor mcgregor goes in there and he's like talking that smack that it to the other person that's him trying to even help himself mentally maybe conor oh i'm sure it is and you know he's what i'm also saying just wanting to get in his head Right, so he wants to get in his head, and at the same time, he gonna help his own head. He's, he's, he's using on, that to his advantage because he's allowed, and it's free freedom of speech. That's because if I could say this and get in this dude's head, I'm yeah. gonna tell you. It, you know why? Because that might as well be Dana's little boy right there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's another problem. I do too. I think it's a problem. Yeah. You can't be Dana White. Mr. Celebrity Guy, but yet be the UFC main guy. Yeah. I think he's got a couple he's things pulled, crisscrossed. Uh, he's, he's pulled from too many parts. Dude. You know and I mean? they, they say that he, he, like, never stops. Well, I can believe it because he's doing this and that and this. and. Yeah, but at the same time, he's, 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 he's like pulled trying to, from all that. Yeah. So he can't do some stuff because right. that's against this order. Yeah. And then he can do this stuff, but then he can't do can't this do that. stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you're, you know what I mean? It's like when you get into this situation uh -huh. and you want to do this, but you can't because of this. And yeah. you feel like now, now maybe that's why he is that, be, uh, is who he is because he can do it and pull it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Not a lot of people can have all their strings pulled and still be one piece of cloth. Still be that guy. That main guy that's in control and not mess up. Right. I think he does pretty good at it, but I think he he plays favorites, man. Oh, I think sure. it's 
He plays what's Some of the seven. fights, he dude. He plays what's seven. Who do, I want to know who does the rankings because, like, obviously I know how motocross works, like, pretty good. And Maybe I'm not, like I'm, the judge? Or? No, like the overall rankings. You ever went on there and looked? They'll have somebody that ain't want to fight in, like, I don't know, six weeks, but he's just fighting good, but he just hasn't won yet. They'll have him ahead of Joe Blow that's already won three fights in a row in the, in the rankings for that right. weight division. Right. I'm like, why? well, the dude won three times. This dude ain't won at all. Right. He's fought good, but how can you put him above? It's really it has awkward, has to be man. like the people he's fought. Or... It's like saying that, okay, say Eli Tomac is the guy, right, okay? Well, we're going to put Eli down, and he's like the fourth best guy, and we're going to put, I don't know, some average dude. Maybe a Cooper Webb is number one, when right. really it goes the other way. Right. I don't get it, but that's why I don't do ratings. I'm not I'm not someone who does that because yeah, I, me either. Cause I don't get it. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know where they even get the information to put somebody in a certain spot. Does that make sense? Because they're giving orders, <laughs> and they have know, to man. give the orders. They're giving. I just the feel like, give. no matter what you're doing, if you're dominating, then you should be number one. If you're not dominating, then you're not number one. But you need to go in order. You need to, like, if you're going to take the time to do stats, do it right. That's like, okay, oh, Aaron Rodgers threw 50 touchdowns last year when really he only threw 30. <laughs> Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they added up two seasons. It's retarded, man. And for me, I you know, a higher ranking based off of difficulty instead of pure numbers that could work. Like the difficulty of the fighter, I don't know. Yeah, though. that's what I was saying. That's what you were saying. Yeah, like the caliber of fighters he's fought. Uh huh. Maybe so like, the other dudes that that dude's three and zero against had a hell of a losing record too. Yeah. So they ain't ranked high, but this dude's fought people that's won this level. That, so that makes him like, is, and that's even how they're still placing higher him. than this guy because yeah. he put up a hell of a fight against this dude that's proven himself right. or whatever. And um, a lot of a lot of like the sports out there are just pure numbers. So maybe maybe they are doing it that way. Because I'm telling you, man, you look at it. Like, you go on the internet. Go to UFC's website. You know, like I said, I, I don't know everything about UFC, but I watch it. I'm pretty into it. Um, and for me, like, I look at stats and, okay, like, what's his name? Old uh, Mighty Mouse. What? Little short dude. Little Mighty Mouse. The, what is that? I don't even know. What is it, 125 pounds? Whatever he fights, the little dudes. Well, he's He won forever, right? And, um, like, he got beat. Well, they don't take and knock him all the way down or nothing. You know, they keep him right there. I think that you got to make it a little more fair, man. If he loses, he's going to have to go down a little bit. Yeah. That's my opinion. Fight some other people. Yeah. Not stay and, right in the title. And the thing it, well, and that's the weird thing, man, is – um, you know, like he lost that fight to uh, what's his name, uh, Cejudo, I think it was, and now it's like automatically all they're talking about is a rematch. Yeah, it's guaranteed. Well, what if we go to the Des Nations and Hurlings beats Tomac? Oh, are we gonna get a rematch? <laughs> and Moto <Mato> too, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Um, but my whole point is, man, is like you can't. You can't just uh, redo it just to, oh, well, it could have went differently. Well, yeah, it could have. Could have. But it didn't. So now this dude, don't take him and fight him right away. Let him enjoy it a little bit. You know where they're doing that at? And this is crazy, dude. In the women's division, they're they're doing what I'm saying to do. They're doing. So, like, instead of having Rose Namahunas come in there and fight, like, right away and lose that title or whatever, Nah, man, she's enjoying it. Right. You know, like, a lot of, like, that Ronda Rousey, she'd come right back and fight again. I'm like, dude, you're stupid. You need to go take six months and go enjoy your life. <laughs> you get all that money, man. You bust your ass like that. Don't, you know, you don't need to come back out there and, uh, you know, put it all on the line right away. Right. And then, okay, so you get beat. Now who are you? 
you're not the person no more. Now it's right. somebody else. So my my theory is if uh, if you're a fighter, I think that if you win, I think that you've earned a little bit of time to yourself. Take a little time off. Don't fight right away. Don't give him that rematch. Why are you going to give him a rematch, Sean Rife? You didn't give him a rematch. You give him a rematch, you, you don't whoop their ass. I'd now you're going to give him a rematch? I'd somebody else, then come yeah. back. Yeah. And then say, okay, well, you know, tell big old Dana, no, I want them to go and work their way back up. Right. Yeah, yeah, I had to do it. So yeah. let's make them do exactly. it. Exactly. So, okay, this person, this Joe Blow, right, he's number one for five years. Old Mighty Mouse, he ran it for a while. And then all of a sudden he loses. Well, he needs to work his way back up. That's how I feel about it. I, don't I know think how you, so too. You, you feel the same way? Yeah. Because, I mean. Just because you, I mean, you got all the way there, then you lost. So Yeah. You don't need to be up there in the rankings. Right. I don't know, man. Something they need to work on. All right, guys. Well, we have been live for a couple hours here. Episode number two, going smooth. We are at the Moto Sandbox, courtesy of Jason Baker from Dream Tracks. Uh, yeah, if you haven't been, I think there's a couple spots left open. Last time I heard of, look them up on Instagram, Moto Sandbox or Dream Tracks, and uh, get in touch with them if you're interested in coming out and uh, doing some riding or having a track built. Um, other than that, Sean, man, honestly, I think that we've pretty much covered everything we need to cover. Honestly, I really do, man. It's been a good show. Uh, we reached out. We got.